Hello my lovely friends! My name is Ava and today I have some alien romance recommendations for you. Baby, baby. Also want to represent my sweater. It says read whatever you want, love whatever you read. Um, this is from Desi. I'll link her um, channel down below and then if her listing for this is still up I'll link it down below too. Um, but I'm obsessed with this crew neck sweatshirt and I'll wear it literally all the time. I feel like I wear it almost every video I film. <laughs> but I thought it was appropriate for today's video because we're talking about alien romances so I gotta represent. So I love alien romances if you could not tell. <laughs> and so I have a part one for this down below um, where uh, about a year ago I want to say I recommended um, some alien romances. I've read quite a few since that video. So we're going to talk about the ones that I've read since I made that video about a year ago. I just love alien romances and if you have any recommendations for me that are not on this list and trust me I've read the staple ones. I've read IPB, Fire Blow Dragons and those are more in the um first video. So let's get started on these romances. I like love all of these by the way and they're so entertaining and so fun and if you shame anybody from reading alien romances or any kind of romances in general shame on you. Let people read whatever the heck they want to read. These are fun. These are heck of fun. Okay. First one I want to mention is one of my favorite books so far of 2022, which is Choosing Theo by Victoria Abilene. Now I know that on my first video, someone literally commented, Ava, you need to read this book like a year ago. And I was like, oh, okay, sounds good. And I never got around to reading it. And so um, I found out my uh, Libby had it like month, a month ago and I became completely sucked in. So this is about uh, Theo and Jade. Jade gets kidnapped from Earth and gets stranded on this planet called Calcania. And on this planet, human women have to be matched with a male alien for a specific amount of time. And then they can either stay with that alien or move to another one or like change aliens. Um, and so in the choosing ceremony, Jade ends up picking Theo, which everyone is very shocked by. Theo has a bunch of scars all over his body and people in Calcania are very, um, revered for their perfection and like having no um impurities is that a word like any like scars or things like they uh, like love perfection theo in here was very injured as a child and got in a fire so he has scars all over his body and um jay is actually very intrigued by him when she first sees him and ends up picking him to be her kind of like protector during this short amount of time and people are very shocked Theo is probably the most shocked. Um, he thinks that no woman could ever love him because of the way that he looks and the way that society has treated him. And so he thinks that Jade must be a spy. Like the government must be spying on him. So they send Jade. Like he can't believe that a woman this beautiful would want to be with him. And so Jade tries her very darkest to show him that she is very attracted to him and cares for him. Um, I just love these characters. I love how broody and damaged Theo is and how he grew to love Jade. Um, there's also a fate of mate aspect in here too, so look out for that. Um, I also love Jade. She's a beautiful plus size woman who loves every inch of her body and Theo loves every inch of her body. Like he's very attracted to her. And this one was just like amazing. I've read two other books in this series, so I do recommend the other books. I don't think they're as good as the first one in my opinion so far. Um, I've read Freeing Luca, gave it four stars, and I've read book three, which is Saving Verico. I'd give it 3.5 stars, I believe. I do recommend this series in general, especially just book one. If you want to read any of these books, read book one. I will hopefully be reading book four and five very soon. They're just not on audio for me yet, so I just haven't picked them up yet. <laughs> Next, I have I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. Now, don't be discouraged by the cover or the title. This book is very good. If you love Radiance by Grace Draven, which is one of my favorite romances of all time, you will love this book. So this is the romance between Susan and Alex. Susan is a human woman and she gets like kind of like mail order brided to Alex's uh, planet. Um, he's kind of like a reptilian lizard <laughs> alien and they get married. And this is very much a friends to lovers. Um, they get to know each other first and learn about each other and then they end up falling in love. Um, she gets to know their culture and their way of life and on this planet and it was very entertaining. I thought this was a great, great alien romance. It's just so cute and their communication skills are freaking amazing. Like, <laughs> this cover is bizarre, I get it, but don't let it deter you from this amazing book because it's really good and I need to read more Regine Abel. I know that people love her books. I've only read this one by her. And I think the rest of the books in the series are like alien romances too. Like the series is called Prime Mating Agency. The other books in here that I haven't read yet are um, I Married a Naga, I Married a Birdman, and I Married a Merman. Um, all of them sound 
really good. <laughs> Okay, next I want to mention a series. I think I mentioned it briefly in my first part, but I do want to talk about the Interstellar Brides program by Grace Goodwin. I I got back into the series. So I, I think I only read up to book like four or something back when I first made that video. I've now since read, I think up to book like 10. I don't know. But the one that I like love that I want people to read that can be read as a standalone is um, Tamed by the Beast. <laughs> this one is so fun. Okay, so this one takes place on a planet called Atlan. And these aliens on Atlan have a beast mode. Essentially, it's like the Hulk, like you'll Hulk out, except you don't turn green. Um, and you'll like this, get bigger, stronger, you know? And so the way you go into like beast mode is like a bunch of different means. The main one though is like surrounding your mate. So you kind of have this like timer in your body that is waiting for your mate. And if your mate is not found by a certain time, you will beast out, get in beast mode. Your body won't let you change back and you can become violent and dangerous to society. So a lot of men who get into beast mode, who can't find their mates, end up being put to death because they are a danger to everybody on this planet. And so Tiffany in here is a human woman from Earth who's been matched to an Atlan warrior or hero in here. She realizes that he is about to be put to death because he is in beast mode and he can't get out of it. And so she goes to save him and to tell him that she is his mate. I really like this one. This is very different than the other books in the series. A lot of the books in the series are very formulaic if you read the first like four. Um, and this one kind of like strays from that and I really liked it. There's like a mystery plot in here. This one was just really hot and really fun. We have a tall uh, plus size woman in here. Love that. Um, she was beautiful and the hero like literally treats her like a goddess. Amazing. Um, so I really recommend this series and I'm going to binge the series. I've been binging them. And hopefully one day I can do a deep dive video into Grace Goodwin um, like I did for Ruby Dixon because y'all seem to like those. Um, but please be aware like the Interstellar Bread Program, every single book is very hot, very explicit, and um, each one starts out with a, a scene, like first first sentence, first, first chapter, immediate scene. So every single book starts out that way. So please be aware. <laughs> Don't listen to these audiobooks out loud if you have people around you, I recommend. We of course have to talk about my girl Ruby Dixon really fast. <laughs> so first I want to mention Adiron, Adirion, Adiron, I never know how to pronounce his name. Um, it's the first book in the Corsair Brothers series. I believe I talked about the Corsair series a little bit in part one. This is a spinoff of the Corsair series and this one focuses, well this book focuses on Adiron who is the one out of the three Sithai brothers. Um, you've met them in previous books and um, they're on this kind of like treasure hunt. They're trying to find this abandoned spaceship that is apparently full of goods. And they find the spaceship and they find out there there are human women from Earth on the spaceship. And the human women like like lure them to the ship and try to uh, steal stuff from their ship uh, while this is happening. And so it's really funny, but here and there are meet and he is utterly like entranced by her. Like he thinks she is a beautiful, woman and wants her like she's like right when he sees her she's like he's like she's mine i'm gonna try and keep this woman <laughs> and jade our heroine is honestly having none of that she does not want that she's been traumatized in the past by aliens um so trooper went in here for previous sexual assault so while they're trying to so the human women are trying to steal from adiron and his brothers and so they lock them in this like room they trick them into go into this room and they gas them to knock them out there's like a window in the room and so adiron like sees jade through this window and he's like looking at her while he's like passing out he's looking at her he's like this woman is amazing i'm gonna keep her <laughs> and she's like what the heck and so yeah jade is a beautiful um plus size woman i believe she's also a woman of color um and their relationship is just so cute and sweet. It's like a forced proximity too, because at one point in the book, the two of them are stuck on this spaceship together alone and um, their relationships explored. And so there are so far two other books out in the series. The fourth book, which is the one I'm most excited for, um, is not out yet. Um, and I've only read a little bit of book two. I think I just want the audiobook so bad for these. So I'm kind of like waiting. Uh, you can read it on its own. You don't have to read the Corsairs 
books, but I feel like you get more enjoyment out of it because you meet them in previous books and they're just a hoot and a half, like these brothers. I wanna mention another Ruby Dixon book that I just read, which is called Bad Guy. So this is actually a gladiator romance and I love gladiators. I need like more romances. So if you have any uh, gladiator Rex, leave them down below, please. So this is about Mina and Cruelden. So Mina is a human slave on this space station, space station where they uh, house gladiators. Golden is one of the gladiators under lock and key because he is very violent. He is very angry and so he kind of like tears apart his room. He rips up blankets, he tears the sink out of the wall, and Mina has been tasked to clean up his room. Quilden has these cuffs on his body uh, that are magnets and so when a button is pressed he will stick to the wall so he can't like attack anybody who's in the room. And so Mina like cleans up the room while he is stuck to this wall. And from the moment he sees her, he's like staring at her, watching her, wants to know what she's doing at all times, like just wants to know this woman. And she's like cleaning up and glaring at him. And she's like, please don't do this again. Like, I don't want to clean up your mess. Do not make a mess. And so he purposely makes messes to get her to come and visit him so he can see her because he's like entranced by her. And then like there's more stuff going on after this. That's just the very beginning of the book. This book is very long, but I really loved a lot of stuff about this book. I gave it five stars. It's gonna be probably one of my favorites of the year. We'll see. Um, but I just love their relationship, their dynamic, and how they absolutely fell in love with each other. And of course, in Ruby Dixon fashion, I loved all of the alien stuff going on too. Next, I have Entered in the Alien Bride Lottery by Margot Bond Collins. This is the romance between Natalie and Cab, and um, Cab is part of this alien species who is in like an agreement and a treaty with Earth where they will protect Earth from evil aliens if they send women for the bride games, the alien bride lottery, there you go. And um, human women get picked to participate in some bride related games on television so they can find a mate with an alien male. And Cab is one of the aliens who is picked and Natalie is one of the human women that are picked. And so right when he sees Natalie, he knows that she is his. But Natalie does not want to be there at all and tries to sabotage her experience to be sent home. It's kind of like the Hunger Games and the selection in like an alien world where like you can be sent home if you don't have a mate or whatever. But yeah, this really reminded me of like the dystopian worlds of the selection and the Hunger Games and everything being televised and all that stuff. This was obviously steamier and filled with a lot of aliens, so please be aware of that. I thought that this concept was really interesting and it stuck me in. However, there were parts of the book that I wish were explained more, especially when it comes to like alien um appendages <laughs> and just like some things that i feel like were like glossed over and i want more in-depth stuff i just felt like the book was too short for me personally and so i might uh try the rest of the series we'll see but this first book was a solid like four stars for me and i do recommend it if you're wanting to read more alien romances next is one that um i didn't know i would love so much we have ensnared by tiffany roberts this is actually a trilogy and all three books are centered around the same couple which is kate todd and ivy um, I've only read book one and I already know that I need to read the rest of the series. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I just haven't found the time. So Ivy is a human woman whose apparently spaceship has crash landed on Katon's planet, but it crashed a while ago. So Ivy is in like this cryo sleep. And Katon is this um, alien warrior on his planet. They look like spiders, spider creatures. The queen of this land is out to force Katon to be her mate. Even though he does not want that at all, he does not like the queen. And so he loves to journey out into the jungle. He ends up coming across the spaceship that Ivy's on and ends up accidentally waking her up and taking her out of cryo sleep. He thinks that she is a pet and he's gonna keep her. And so he brings her back to his nest and uh, realizes that this is actually a woman and he might be developing feelings for her. I thought this was wonderful. I love their relationship so much and I can't wait to read more about their relationship in book two and book three. It's just so sweet. Like you wouldn't assume by the cover that this book is sweet, but Katon is so sweet, Ivy. The language barrier in here is something I'm a big sucker for, especially in alien romances. So there's a big um, language barrier here. They try to learn each other's language. And there's obviously the conflict of the queen who wants Katon so badly. So this just had a lot of elements that I loved in here and I really, really, really recommend it. Next, I have a novella. We have Ash Planet Warriors by BK Ludwig. I downloaded this when it was free on Amazon. It might still be free, so maybe check it out. But this is about Leah and Zerim. Leah is a human woman whose spaceship crashes with her like family on Zerim's planet. And Zerim comes across her in her crash pod and ends up saving her and kind of like taking care of her in the wilderness of his planet and kind of like teaching her how to survive in the wilderness during this time. So yeah, the two of them kind of like spend a couple days alone in the jungle and the woods together. 
um, are trying to learn more about this alien planet. They end up developing like feelings for each other, but at the end of the day, he does have to take her back to the space station so that she can go back to her family. And neither of them assumed through all this that they might actually start developing um, more than just lust for each other, they might develop love for each other. <laughs> so this is the prequel to the Ash Planet Warrior series. And so this is like the prequel to their full length novel, which is book three in the Ash Planet Warrior series. Um, I'm really interested to read their full length book. This just gives you a little bit of a taste into what they could be like. I don't know if it's out or yet. When I read this, it was not out yet. So that's why I didn't read it. But I thought this was really great. And I am subscribed to BK Ludwig's um, newsletter. And um, she has some very fun artwork done about her aliens. It's very fun. <laughs> Next I have Rescued by Her Alien Mate by Ava York and Star Huntress. Um, this is very Ice Planet Barbarian-esque. Um, our heroine and a bunch of other women get abducted from Earth and their spaceship that they're on it gets crashed on our hero's planet. The hero realizes that they are fated mates and the heroine doesn't know what's going on and there's like a language barrier here. They got implant- the human woman got implanted with something when they were in the spaceship so like they can understand what the aliens are saying to them but the aliens can't understand them the women and so yeah there's this like immediate attraction between the two of them but i think like i didn't really mind it like the insta love insta lust between the two because it is a fate and mate book you know i just love a good language barrier and i thought that it was done really well in this book i honestly can't wait to read the rest of the books in the series i know that this book series is very long and so this one really reminded me of ice planet barbarians in many ways um and so yeah if you like ipv i really recommend checking this one out and lastly i want to mention the virgin hunt games by um, mel teshko uh, this is going to be volume one. I've only read this first book in the series. I know there's many other books in the series too. Um, but I read this when it was an arc on NetGalley. So this is about Melody in the year 2324. And um, she needs to save her family from financial ruin. So to do that, she enters the Virgin Hunt Games. This is a game where like women are the hunted and they get matched with a hunter. And they the hunted and the hunters have different goals. So the hunters are trying to win the most points as possible. Whoever wins the most points in this game gets a bunch of money. The hunter has to find the woman that they're matched with at the beginning of the games. And if they wham bam, thank you wham them, um, they get a lot of points. But the the hunt, hunted, the women in this situation, they get the most points by eluding their hunter and um, getting with other people. <laughs> So Melody is one of the hunted and um, Damon is an alien who is one of the hunters, but he's not matched to her like in the games. And so when he sees her, he's very, very attracted to her. And the main reason why he's in this games is to, I think on alive one of the other hunters. And he feels like the setting would be the perfect place to do that and not be like convicted yet. The guy that he is like out to get revenge on is the hunter for Melody. So he's like, this is the perfect scenario. I'm going to unalive this dude and then have a lot of fun with the person he's supposed to be hunting. And so he kind of like protects Melody from her hunter and um, they have fun along the way. There might be some multiple partner scene in here because this, the games get hot and heavy because that's like what the game is about, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's just really fun and I definitely need to read more in the series. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. I gave it a solid uh, four stars, I want to say. And this really reminded me of The Hunger Games, but steamier and with aliens, so. But there you have it. Those are some alien romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these recommendations or if you plan to. And um, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a um, any kind of planet emoji. Because we're talking about aliens on different planets, so any kind of planet emoji. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.